Good morning, our thought for the day. There is a tendency at every important but difficult crossroad to pretend that it is not really there. I'm sorry. My name is Claudia Anderson, and I'm one of the deacons here at the First Congregational Church of Bethel. The announcements for today. There is no youth group meeting today. Please check your emails. A survey has been sent out, and we're asking you to return it by January 24th. This will assist in helping set up meeting times, interests, and creating the best experience for all our kids. The Wednesday Bible series entitled New Mercies, Unwavering Hope, continues this week at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live. Thank you for joining us. join me in the call to worship. The vast expanse of sky stretches in praise. The waters and streams cry out in longing. 
The earth, now hardened, incubates life. And we, your people, awaken. Please join me now in the invocation. Creating, calling, and faithful God, we come to this time and place to be with you, to worship you, and to learn from you. May our time together be like your creation of light in the darkness that you called good. May it be that you would call us good while we respond to your call and as we listen to you. Amen. gospel reading today comes from the gospel of mark chapter 1 verses 4 to 11 jesus used an everyday event in the lives of his listeners and taught them a spiritual truth about the kingdom of god it's a spiritual truth that few christians today really grasp and can understand what it means to be born of water and spirit and how this understanding can change your entire life. Here now from the Gospel of Mark. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Baptism of Jesus In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending down like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, and with you I am well pleased. Here ends the reading.
Please pray with me. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you. We pray, we pray these things in the name of Jesus, who is our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, today we celebrate the baptism of Jesus by John in the Jordan River. In Mark's Gospel, we hear that as Jesus was coming out of the water, the heavens tore apart. The Spirit descended on him as a dove. And a voice said, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Through this theological uh, narrative, we learn that God desires a renewal of covenantal life. John's baptism seems to be a type of tevila, the Jewish practice of immersion in a ritual bath called mikveh, for the purpose of purification. Now, tevila was practiced in a lot of different situations, such as a woman's cycle of menstruation, as a part of conversion to Judaism, and as at other times for purification purposes. So as John is calling for repentance in verse 4, the immersion in the river would have followed the person's profession to some sort of change in their life. The work that only the Holy Spirit can do fully in that person's life. Let me tell you a little story about my calling and anointing in ministry. I was 12 years old when I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Confessed my sins, and at that time, like you know, the sin was probably something like stealing candy or cookies from my mother's cookie jar or some other thing like that. But I confessed those things, and I was ready to and promised to follow Christ. So I went to a very solid church who believed in the power of prayer and helped me as a youth to understand the Bible. But... By the time I was 20 years old and left for college, I went through a time of challenge and became rebellious. I began to ignore all that I had learned in my faith as a Christian growing up in a very good church, and I went wayward for a while. Wayward. Then came marriage and after college, and with that, the birth of three children and I began to settle down a little more. I continued to search for something, though, something that I needed in my life as a young woman, but just couldn't wrap my fingers around what that was or my thoughts. My husband was a Christian who supported my search and helped me in my faith journey along the way as best he could. Something about, though, birthing my children drew me into a deeper need to depend on God in a very vulnerable time of life, as a woman's life, as it is. And because not only did I want to raise them as Christians in the faith, but I needed more in my own faith journey. <clears throat> I needed to understand some of my deeper questions. I became restless in my spirit, and I also lost my passion for my work during that time as a nurse. Eventually, I did reconnect back to my faith in a very real way through a local church Bible study and a Christian women who began to mentor me. However, my restlessness continued. I began to sense a calling. I had signed up to con continue uh, my master's degree in nursing and wanted to teach nursing, which was something I had a desire for and for a long time. <clears throat> you see, I love to teach and thought maybe that's why I'd lost my passion. Maybe I wasn't meant to be in the hospital, but in the academic, but I was wrong. However, God knew and spoke to me during this time. And you see, faith comes by hearing. One day I went to church and a guest preacher read from John's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 16 to 17, and these were the words that I heard. 
And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. He lives with you and will be in you. This reading from John's Gospel became a pivotal moment in my life. At that moment, I knew what I had been missing, what I haven't really touched on in my life. And I heard the voice of the Spirit <clears throat> in my spirit. I am in you. Preach the gospel. You can imagine how shocking that was for me to hear that in my own mind and spirit. And the Holy Spirit at that time literally caused me in the church to feel a fire in my body. It was visceral. And no, I wasn't having any hormonal changes at that time. Some people tease me about that. No, I wasn't. So much so, though, I almost fainted in the church. So I went home, and for weeks I began to pray about that moment in my life, what that could mean. And eventually I dropped out of my nursing program and pursued study in seminary. I had a complete change of direction in my life, and when I did that, had peace. And then I heard it again in the year 2000, because that was back in the 90s, from the Reverend Dr. Jerry Street, chaplain of Yale University, who was my mentor and speaker at my ordination. And at the end of laying on of hands, he bent over and he whispered in my ear, preach the gospel. Maybe you have experienced something like that in your life. Maybe you haven't, and that's okay. Not everyone has that kind of physical reaction to the Holy Spirit's indwelling. And again, a visceral reaction at such a deep level. But whether we feel that or not, I learned something, that through calling and God calling us and ex the experience of the Spirit and the studies I had done, I learned that repentance, which means literally a change of direction and happens when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, happens to an individual, whether you can really feel that in your body or not. And furthermore, I learned that you can confess sin, but not really repent, not really change direction, not really make God Jesus your Lord and understand what that means. The Holy Spirit in our scripture reading today descended on Jesus' body. And that happens to us as well. Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. You are created new. Change in our life trajectory can come quickly and radically like it did with me, or more gradually as life unfolds. Either way, either way, here's, here's my point. Once God fills you with the Holy Spirit, Scripture tells us we are sealed. Speaking to the Gentiles, Paul said, you, are, you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and when you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. So from the time I was 12 years old, going through challenges and, and even rebelliousness in my life, to the time when it all came to back together with me, I began to realize that this Holy Spirit had been in me all along, probably responsible for my restlessness during that time. You're a new creation. Old things have passed away, and all things become new. 
But do we really understand what this means? Do we live this way? When we come to, when we come to Christ, does God just make us a better version of ourselves? Or does something more profound happen within us? Scripture tells us that your very being is changed and you are sealed. Probably down to the very cellular or DNA level of your body. And when the Holy Spirit merges with our human spirit, you become a new creation. This is about the rebirth that Jesus spoke to when he spoke to Nicodemus and said, you must be born again. And then Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 6, 17, but he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. This is Christ in me, the hope of glory. Now we may turn from God as I did, but remember, I, I remembered that I was sealed by the Holy Spirit. It's been there since my baptism, and it's been there since your baptism. You may accept Christ as Savior, but have you accepted him as Lord? Not until I knew him as Lord was I truly free. John came baptizing from the wilderness. Now, why the wilderness? Why didn't he baptize from the city where there were lots of more people? Because in the Jewish tradition, wilderness mean, mean, means freedom. But freedom from what? From the oppression that comes when sin remains in our life. And sin is anything from murderer, murdering your brother and sister to just not hearing, listening to God and, and, and following in the direction that God wants us to go. So that oppression that comes, uh, that, that comes from sin keeps us from experiencing what God wants us to experience, which is true freedom. And he was preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins in, first, in verse 4b. You see, that's a change of our mind, a change of our direction. As opposed to the ritual purification of the Jews practiced or, or the baptism of the proselytes of the Gentiles at that time, John's baptism was much more. John is telling the Jews, you need God's forgiveness and are no different than the Gentiles. He was telling them to repent of their ways, change your ways, and was preparing them for the day of judgment, a first step into the new life. You see, John's baptism, uh, John's is a baptism of repentance, a repentance that changes how we think and act and live with one another when we lean into making Jesus our Lord. We have witnessed, uh, certainly, I want to back up here for just a minute. This past week, has been anything, and, and even this past year, anything about anything but repentance. We have, turn, we have witnessed friends and family and neighbors turning against one another in bitter arguments. It horrifies me even more that the church has descended into a lot of hatred and vitriol and division that, come, that has come to plague our culture. See, I believe that we are not in a political war. We are in a cultural war, a spiritual war. And the culture needs to change from itself, not be, not a... a the culture, I want to say, needs a change from itself, not a mirror of itself. So where has the church been? Why are we not being the reflection of God to the culture, of something that the culture needs to see now? Our baptism, our baptismal renewal, in the name of the Creator, Redeemer, and Holy Spirit, our Sustainer challenges the culture to know and experience this precious gift of life. And that's what we need to be doing. All that we see, you see, is around us right now is not love. And when it's not love, it's not God. 
You see, I digress for a moment. We call for justice. Here's the bottom line. God is the ultimate judge, not us. Psalm 89, 14. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. Only God is just. It is his character, which means he is always just. When we try to take it fully into our own hands, we fail. And we harm one another, as we have done over and over in the last 11 months in particular. Oh yes, we can ask for justice, we can pray for justice, but we need to seek it in the, through the eyes and discernment of our, Lord, of our Lord. And we should stand for justice, absolutely. But ultimately, we must ask God to intervene in God's timing. Well, anyway, John then goes on to tell us that he baptizes with the water of the forgiveness of sins and repentance, but that Jesus will baptize with the Holy Spirit. So, and this is incredible news because after centuries of profitless, spiritless history, John promises that Jesus will baptize, immerse, submerge, overwhelm them with the Holy Spirit. Amazing, amazing and good news for sure. Because now we have this opportunity to become sons and daughters of the Most High. You may wonder, well, why is this important for today? And how is this important in today's world? As I've said before, the world is in crisis and the church is being called to respond with an answer that is not the same as what culture is looking at. Culture needs to see something else. We must reflect the image and likeness of Christ Jesus, which is written in our hearts and influences our actions. The body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And for that reason, we have incredible influence when we present collective, personally in our relationships and collectively as the body of Christ. We stand at the threshold, I said it before and I believe it, we stand at the threshold of a great revival in the church worldwide and it starts with repentance. It begins in the house of God and trust me, the church needs to repent. It starts with sons and daughters of God. It starts with us. The Lord wants to pour into us and out of us because there is a great harvest that is waiting for the Lord now for healing to be done. And when we connect that way, our passion comes back. It comes back to us. Our passion and our purpose. And then God will show us what to do next. Because you've heard this before, people in your life may never step foot in this room, this church, and you might be the only church that someone will ever know. Be the church wherever you are with gladness, not until we connect to Christ's passion, will we have what we long for, which is peace. And through baptism, we die to sin, rise with Christ. We are sealed by the Holy Spirit for God's good purposes, which is our purpose. Know who you are and know whose you are. May God forgive us all. May we have the strength to change this coming year. May we reconnect to the Holy Spirit and our passion to bring the good news and continue to go out in the world and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to talk for a moment about the renewal of baptismal promises and how 
that can renew our, us in our spirit. And so normally if I had uh, the audience here with me today, we would have the baptismal font out, we would have stones in the water, and I would invite you to come over and pay, take a stone and we would baptize and remind, I would pray over you and remind you of God's Holy Spirit that you're sealed in. Or if you've never accepted Christ Jesus, at that moment you have that opportunity. And you have that opportunity right now where you are. You see, our God created life forms and brought them out of the waters of chaos and embraced them and called them good. Jesus baptized in the River Jordan by John the Baptist became living water for us and embraces all of us. Jesus baptized in the Spirit and invites all who are poor and oppressed and marginalized and all others who are hungry and who are thirsty for righteousness. We follow Jesus with our baptism, marking a starting place for a new life and new ways of being. We join Jesus in love and service. And so let us prepare our hearts and minds to see, feel, and hear again the vows of baptism. And I would invite you at home that each question that I'm about to ask and Claudia will answer with I do, that you hit the like and the heart buttons as many times as you agree with that in your spirit and in your heart. So here are the questions. And I would invite you again, make sure you're on your, your fingers on the heart and like button. Do you renew and affirm the promises made at your baptism? If so, please hit those likes and hearts. I do. Do you recognize the call of God to be God's people always? I do. Do you embrace the way of Jesus in faith and in ministry? I do. And do you accept the nurture of the Holy Spirit who renews your spirit each and every day? I do. Do you accept and embrace others who seek a liberating faith in God? I do. Amen. In the renewing of your baptismal vows, remember your baptism as a mark of acceptance and welcome into the care of Christ Church where you may begin again your Christian faith and life. Amen. As we now turn our attention to our joys and concerns, every Sunday we lift up prayers and those who are listening or wish us to pray for you or for your friends and family, Please let us know who they are. You can contact us at prayers at firstchurchbethel.org where we will pray for you. If you would like us to lift, it up, lift up your prayers needs here in on Sunday morning, we're happy to do that as well. We have had some prayer needs come in, but they are um, requesting that, they, that I just pray privately with them. But just know that people are coming to prayers at firstchurchbethel.org to lift, to ask for prayer. Let us pray. For the coming of this new day and the opportunity, O oh God, to begin again, for the chance to think anew and the invitation to revisit and amend our ways. For the ways we have found refuge and challenge within this, within this congregation and the community of Christ around the world. And for our bodies, Though through which we, we know and celebrate life for this glorious, complicated, interconnected world that is our home. We give you thanks and praise. God, we rejoice in your grace, given and received. We thank you that you claim us, that you wash us, strengthen us, and guide us, that you empower us to live a life worthy of our calling. The time is coming, though, says the prophet Isaiah, when they will not hurt or destroy on my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. We trust your promise, merciful and holy God, and we seek to know you more. We ask, O oh God, that you help those who are having emotional suffering due to sickness or loss, we ask, O oh God, that you heal those who are 
suffering as a result of what they have witnessed this week in our country. Ask, oh God, that you heal us as a nation. Cause us to burn with new passion and purpose and vision for all people. We ask for a healing again of this nation for the divisions and the deep pain that every single American feels no matter what their political belief. We're hurting so deeply, God. Please heal us. Show us the way as your church body, as we stand with you. We pray these things in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The sharing of our gifts. Faithful God, bless us in our baptismal calling to be in the ministry of showing hospitality to others. We offer you our gifts of gratitude with our time, talent, and treasure. your abundant love you have given us more than we could possibly imagine we offer these gifts and pledge ourselves trusting that abundance so that we may build just and sustainable lives together glorifying you and giving life to the world amen
Thank you, God, for blessing us with memories of Jesus' baptism and ours. Thank you, God, for removing our reluctance and doubt and fears, replacing them with courage and commission. We go forth now with your calling, direction, and blessing. Amen.